July 2nd. Okay, so we're still kind of dipping our toe in this brand new water that July is offering us. We have a lot going on today. Not only do we have the moon in this Taurus energy going void, of course, at 11.44 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, locking into Gemini energy at 11.51 a.m. But we also have Neptune going retrograde and then Mercury moving into Leo energy. Again, I'm going to recommend you take a listen to July's energy forecast if you haven't already. Download your Zodiac forecast, join my Patreon so that you can access all 12 so that you know how the big three in your chart will be operating throughout the month. And of course, get your Cancer Season e-guide out, flip to this particular chapter and definitely capture some of the thoughts, some of the topics, some of the themes that are popping off for you right now is we're definitely going to have to revisit these topics and themes not only as we move throughout July, but as we kind of carry into the fall, definitely setting the tone for some big ideas, some major shifts, some major changes coming our way throughout the month. So there's a lot going on. Now, let's talk about the moon for a second. The moon has given us a couple of days to kind of get grounded, get anchored, be a little bit more present in that Taurus energy. But the transition from Taurus energy to Gemini energy means that we're moving out of our physical body. We're moving out of the present moment. We're moving up into the headspace. We are rapidly going to be processing new information, new details, new perspective, new options, new opportunities. And of course, that Gemini energy has us torn between some of the different options that we are definitely trying to debate between. The Gemini energy definitely going to push us into a new territory of curiosity in order for us to tap into our headspace, our heart space, and come up with some creative solutions. Yes, we're very much in cancer season. We're still kind of reflected and attached to the past. However, we are gaining a little bit of momentum to start pivoting out of the past and start kind of projecting ourselves into the future. There are 14 different aspects here today, so a very busy day in the cosmos. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. So let's jump into it. The moon in Taurus energy going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy, really pushing for this rebranding, for this new identity, for this new version of self to come out to play. The moon anchoring in the present moment, anchoring in this new perspective, we're starting to see this new version of self from a new set of eyes. We're starting to see new worth, new value, new confidence, new self-esteem within ourselves. And we're starting to see where it is that we've actually grown. We've actually healed. We've actually repaired some of the problems, some of the wounds that we have definitely been sitting in, especially when it comes to how it is that we see and perceive our ourselves. 107 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Neptune will be going retrograde. There is an astral forecast out there for your listening pleasure. Again, check out your Zodiac forecast, the Cancer Season e-guide in order to understand where this is taking place in your life, how it is going to impact and influence you, and what the lesson is that you need to be learning. We have the moon coming up to bumping into teaming up with Uranus in this Taurus energy as well. This is going to be a zap to our central nervous system, a zap to our mental plane. We are really seeing what needs to end, what needs to change, especially in our physical realms in order for us to adopt a new way of doing things, a new way of operating, a new way of actually taking control over our lives and rearranging, redesigning, restructuring our realm and reality to align with the higher self, the higher objective, the higher goal, the higher target that we are now trying to align with. The moon is going to semi-square the sun. The sun, of course, in this cancer energy, this is a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict, not a huge one. We are seeing a little bit of a growing pain in this adjustment and transitional period. Anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there is going to be a new emotional awareness of our wants, our needs, our desires, what it is that we can no longer do. And from that, we realize what we could be doing instead. The moon in Taurus has this building in our self-confidence, in our self-esteem, the sun in Cancer energy illuminating where it is that we have too much of a grip on the past. Of course, that Taurus energy is a fixed earth sign. We do not like to change. 
that cancer energy. It is a cardinal water energy, which means that we are changing direction, even though that change is not something that we fully want to align with at this particular point in time. But we understand where it is that we have to make a change in order to create new happiness, new joy, new safety, new security, new stability in our physical realms and in our emotional realms as well. The moon is then going to semi-square the north node in this Aries energy. This is going to, again, amplify where it is that we're going through a transitional period, an adjustment period, where it is that there are changes that need to be made, but we're not really in the mood, in the attitude to do that just yet. We're kind of standing still seeing the opportunities for growth, seeing the opportunities to break away from some of the soul contracts, some of the topics and themes that have it's too connected, too intertwined, too dependent on other people. Again, that North Node is trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's purpose, which in this particular Aries energy is about standing on our own two feet, being independent, a solo quest, a solo adventure in order for us to know thyself. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in the final degrees of this cancer energy is going to try beautiful interaction with Neptune, now in a retrograde, still in his place of power in this Pisces energy at 29 degrees. So a trine is a growth. It's a gentle nudge. It's a graceful transition. And what we're doing here with this water on water action is we're tapping into our imagination. We are really kind of understanding some of the situations and struggles that we've been going through from a spiritual standpoint. We are starting to tap into new creative ideas in order for us to bust out of the old and start activating the path to plan the strategy towards the new. It is a good energy. It's a cleansing energy. It's a purifying energy. Our senses are going to be heightened. Our intuition is coming in strong. Our imagination tapping into another level as well. Just before Mercury moves into Leo energy at 8.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon is going to make the last aspect this time this sextile with Neptune. Again, we have the moon nearing the 29th final degree of Taurus energy. Neptune being at the 29th degree means that any planet, especially the moon, moving through the cycle faster than some of the other planets moving through orbit, anytime we get at a 29th degree, Neptune is somehow going to be involved. This is because we are breaking down the illusion. We're peeling back the layers of confusion. We are definitely needing to have a little bit of a spiritual reset and Neptune does all of those things. Now, the moon in Taurus sextiling with Neptune, now retrograde in this Pisces energy, giving us a beautiful opportunity to not only tap into our imagination, to our higher self, to some creative life force energy solutions here, but we are also understanding how we can anchor it into the physical form. We're not just thinking about it. We're not just moving into la la land. We actually need to embody it. That Taurus energy that the moon is in is how we bring ideas, inspirations into form. And so this is going to be a beautiful energy for us to see and realize what it is. Again, new dreams, new goals, new visions, that we now need to pursue. It is at this time that the moon is going to go void, of course, 11.44 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, a very short period that the moon is void, again, locking into the Gemini energy, 11.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Shortly after noon, we're going to have the moon in Gemini sextile, beautiful interaction with its ruler, Mercury, who is now in Leo energy. Now we love air and fire because this is creativity in action. The moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. We're getting along. We're on the same page. We're building, cultivating a new spark, new fire, new flame. We are building upon the new excitement, the inspiration, the motivation, the determination that we are now tapping into on what we need to do, what we need to change, what we need to pursue, and what it is that we absolutely now have a calling for. The sun, though, in Cancer energy, 
going to get into the boxing ring square off with the North Node in Aries energy. So of course, this isn't a surprise. Just as we're kind of building ourselves up, we need some sort of negative force energy to kind of pull us back down. Here's the thing. The sun in Cancer energy, until we get to that new moon in Cancer on the 5th at 14 degrees, we're still very attached to the past. We're very reminiscent. We're very nostalgic. We are desperately holding on to things that we know are no longer serving us for whatever reason, just because of the emotional connection that we have to certain aspects. The North Node wants us to move on. The North Node wants us to grow, wants us to heal, wants us to evolve. How are we supposed to do all of those things when we are still in a looping pattern of reflecting back over the pain and trauma that is reopening all of the wounds that we are actively trying to heal? The square is a tension point. It is a conflict point because we're going through major growing pains, especially realizing what is no longer serving us, what we have to release, what we have to let go of in order to pivot onto the path that the North Node needs us to be on to actually reach our next soul mission, our next soul chapter, the peak pivot point of knowing thyself. The moon in Gemini energy then going to trine beautiful interaction with Pluto, retrograde in Aquarius energy. We get the trine because we're dealing with like elements, air and air. So, Pluto is coming in to intensify our emotions, to intensify our thoughts. Pluto being retrograde is all about the internalized examination of the power struggle that we are always constantly going through. Because he's in Aquarius energy, we want to think about the future, but we need to think about what we can do to improve, to be better, to heal, to repair ourselves here and now. The moon being our emotions, trining with Pluto, going to intensify our mental and emotional realm in order for us to see things from a different lens. Again, this is going to definitely reveal a lot of hidden wants, hidden needs, hidden desires. We're definitely percolating. We are pushing the boundaries of our curiosity to see what it is that we could be doing instead. And we are going to have a major boss up in our emotional realm, feeling a lot more empowered and in control than we have in the previous days. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over structures, foundations, willpower, discipline. He's retrograde now in this Pisces energy. Go ahead, take and listen to that astro forecast if you haven't done so already. This particular energy is going to be a good one because the Gemini energy that rules over the mental plane that the moon is in, the Pisces energy that rules over our creativity, our inspiration, our soul contracts, we are starting to break down what needs to be done in order for us to clear out the space to build something better in the place of the things that are currently being removed. We are going to have some aha moments. We are going to have a realistic perspective on what we need to do to build and create the foundation that is going to be strong enough to house the new goals, the new visions, the new dreams that we are excited to pursue. The moon is then going to semi-square Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in this cancer energy. Semi-square doesn't feel good. It's not supposed to. It is illuminating the point in which we have the opportunity to grow. Our heart space is not content. It's not happy. We are not feeling safe and secure and stable at all. Venus in this cancer energy, still reflecting the pains, the trauma, of the past, still realizing where in the present moment we're not feeling safe and secure and stable in our emotional realm at all. The moon in Gemini, again, weighing out the pros and cons of the different options, the different path, the different directions that we currently have available for us to take. One is kind of familiar because it's repeating same old, same old cycles. The other one is going to require us to be bold and brave and courageous, and we're not there yet. We will see that mood, that attitude kind of take over once Venus moves into the Leo energy. Again, listen to the July energy forecast for all of those particular details. But at this present moment, we are not sure what it is that we want, need, and desire, what it is that we need to build and create, what it is that we need to do to start healing some of the wounds, some of the pain, some of the traumas that we're currently sitting in. 
The last thing that we have going on here today is Venus trining Saturn. Okay, so this is water on water action. We love water because it's healing, it's purifying, it's cleansing. It's also stimulating our imagination, our soul space, our creativity. The Venus in Saturn trine is going to help us sort out our feelings. We were sitting in a little bit of an element of confusion there for a moment. We recognize that we don't know what we're doing, where to go from here, what we need to build or create. So this particular interaction going to help us sort it out. We are going to realize where it is that we have to be logical and practical, where it is that we have to take actions to actually support and encourage our growth. This is is an energy that is going to remind us that we have to be consistent with whatever it is that we're building and creating. This is going to change our perspective on love, on relationships, on our money matters, on our ability to actually do things that make us happy. And so, yes, there's a certain accountability, responsibility that clicks in here in order for us to realize that if we're not happy, what part did we play in this unhappiness? We have the power and control to flip the script at any time. We have to be a little bit more mature with our emotions. And we also have to boss up to new roles and responsibilities to be the creator of our reality of our realm. 